Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 9th of December 2019 and the time has just gone 10.25 GMT. And it's been a fairly subdued start to the European trading session today. Uh, European equity markets are a little lower, uh, nothing massive, just showing modest losses. Um, you know, Looking uh, at the last few days trading, trading, we had a... We had a fairly positive, you know, very impressive non-farm payrolls update on uh, on Friday just gone. The headline figure was well above expectation. There was a positive revision to the previous month's number. Unemployment drop, dropped back to a joint 50-year low. Earnings ticked up. Earnings are comfortably above inflation rates. So uh, in Amer- workers in America are in jobs and they're getting a real increase in wages. Uh, so we have seen a bit of those gains cool. The little, obviously, the US-China China trade situation is still very much in focus. Uh, as things stand, the United States is still due to increase, uh, to slap uh, tariffs on Chinese goods on December 15th, uh, goods that you know were worth in excess of $150 billion, unless things change between now and then, of course. <clears throat> so that's kind of lingering over the markets. Uh, over the weekend, uh, we, had, we had a few economic reports. Uh, we had these trade figures out of China, um, and, they, and they came in uh, not as economists were predicting. Uh, on the imports front, in, in, imports uh, increased fractionally by 0.3%, which, which is much better than expected because uh, economists were expecting a decline of 1.8%. And keep in mind, the previous month's imp- imports reading was a, it was a decline of in excess of 6%. Uh, on the exports front, um, the decline by 1.1%, which was a big miss considering that economists were, were predicting an increase of 1%. So the increase in ex- imports tells us that Internal, internally, domestic demand in China is strong, which obviously good for the Chinese economy. But on the flip side, exports is, is weak. Ex- exports are weak, rather. And with that, it's a sign that maybe the U.S.-China trade war and the tariffs are impacting the Chinese economy. But then again, China really can play the long game in relation to trade with the U.S. Um, overnight, uh, we heard from I mean, we had some growth figures out of Japan. The third quarter revised GDP showed growth. Um, of 1.8% uh, on a third quarter on an annualized basis, much better than expected. Much better than expected. Uh, that helped uh, lift, you know, broadly lift stocks in Asia overnight, but nothing massive. Um, and here in Europe, uh, it's been a fairly quiet morning in terms of news. Uh, on the on the economic data front, uh, we had uh, trade figures out of Germany. Uh, imports were flat, you know, 0, 0.0% growth. So basically. You know, it's, it's very clear that demand in Germany is you know, flatlining, it's, 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 not, it's, not, uh, it's not growing, um, which ties in with the fact that you know manufacturing and industrial orders and what, what have you are all in, in, a, in a very weak position, whereas German exports increased them 1.2%. So obviously Germany exports a lot to the rest of Europe, North America and Asia, so obviously the, the demand externally is, is very positive. I'll take a quick look now at the week ahead and then I'll look to, to cover some charts. And the weekend article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under news analysis, you'll find the bulk of the articles that we write posted to there. Um, so I already covered the Chinese trade figures. Uh, on Wednesday, it is the Federal Reserve interest rate decision, which it's highly likely the Federal Reserve will keep monetary policy unchanged. You know, there, there are three interest rate cuts between June, between June and October. Um, and at the, at, the, at the last meeting, the Fed made it pretty clear, I dropped a big hint, that they won't be uh, moving rates for some, for, for, for some time. And especially in light of the fact we had a great jobs number, uh, jobs report just gone. Also Wednesday, we had Ted Baker, uh, thir- third quarter figures. That's going to be in focus given that recent weakness uh, in, in, in the share price uh, in terms of the, uh, the sell-off we saw last week. Uh, a big day for the UK on Thursday, the general election. Um, the most, you know, mo- the opinion polls that I've seen have all been important to a conservative win, and some of, some of them important to a conservative majority as well. So, hence why we've seen uh, a pretty elevated elevated British Parliament uh, in the last week or two. Uh, on Thursday, we have uh, the European Central Bank interest rate decision. You know, once again, respecting no change to policy. You know, uh, we're, in, we're now in December. It was last month, November, when the ECB restarted their government bond purchasing scheme. Uh, we might hear um, some some calls for fiscal um, stimulus from the from the governments of various European uh, eurozone economies. And we've heard that from 
the outgoing, um, the, the, well, the old, um, the previous uh, ECB head, Mario Draghi, and now the Christian Lagarde has, has taken over. This is going to be interesting to, uh, to find out um, what the new set with the new chief has to say. On Thursday, we have first half figures from Private Bricks here in the UK, and we have Q4 results from Mercado. Uh, and on Thursday, we have our first half figures from Superdrive. So, as promised, looking at some of the major markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. So, broadly speaking, uh, between October and into late, early October and late November, as broadly was moving higher, but the latest kind of setback in terms of, uh, you know, Trump's kind of tantrum in relation to trade, uh, you know, early, you know at, the, at the beginning of last week, really sent, uh, put, knocked, knocked the FTSE 100 lower. It's back below uh, one, the, well, well, both the 200 moving average, 100 and 50 moving average. So things are looking not so impressive for the FTSE 100, but we seem to, have, in the near term, seem to have found a bit of a floor in around here, this zone at 71.32. And if you can hold above that, and we can hold, and we can keep above 7,200, we might look to kind of retest head back up towards this red line here, the 20 moving average at 73.18. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this zone here of 7,400 up to 7,470. This sort of a, a zone in around here. But on the flip side, if you do manage to turn over on ourselves again, and we take off the recent lows here, we could then be heading back down towards the psychologically important 7,000 mark. Taking a look at what's going on over in Germany with the DAX. So the DAX um, broadly been moving higher since mid mid August. We had a very decent rally. It wasn't too long ago. Well, it was a few weeks ago now. In, in mid November, we hit levels. Uh, there were about 22 month highs. There were levels, you know, not quite two year highs, but they weren't too far away from it um, on the DAX. So things are looking fairly strong on the DAX. Granted, we did have a fairly sharp sell-off last Tuesday when, uh, when, 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 uh, when, when, you know, sorry, last Monday rather. But the market has been recovering since. It's recovered the bulk of those gains, and um, you know we, we see a steady de de decline in negative momentum. So that confirms the upward move we're seeing in the actual market itself. If you can press on higher from here, you know we could be looking at retesting the recent highs in around thirteen thousand three hundred and seventy-four. Should the market turn over on itself? And we take off the recent lows here. We could be looking heading back down towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and a 12,861, or and possibly down to this, this where this line here is uh, a 12,800. You know, it's it acted as both resistance and support not too long ago, so that metric could be of importance uh, in the near in the, in the future. But obviously, there are no guarantees. Uh, we'll take a look now on what's going on over in the uh, over in the US on the. Uh, the Dow Jones. So as you can see, U.S. markets are in much better shape. It was not too long ago, late November, we were at record highs um, for the Dow Jones. Fairly sizable sell-off early last week, but we've recovered the bulk of those losses. So the market, you know, we could be looking at retesting um, the all-time highs in around uh, 28,194 there thereabouts. So you know, we could be looking at retesting uh, record highs for the Dow in, in the near term. And of course, if we do print our record highs, we then could be looking towards 20,200, 300, 400, so on and so forth. Uh, if the market does manage to move lower, support could be found from this, this line here in around the 27,400 mark. Uh, we can see that that area is a zone on a few occasions acted as you know, support and resistance in the past. And if a metric has been, like I said, has been important in the past, it makes it more likely. It'll be so in the future, but obviously nothing is a nothing is a, a done a done deal. If we do drop below that, uh, we could find support from this this yellow line here, 100 moving average, and that comes into play. You can see that actually as support uh, not too long ago in in, in uh, mid to late October, and that that metric comes into play in around 26,918. I'll take a look at the S&P 500. Similar picture in the S&P 500 to the Dow Jones, whereby late late November it was it was at uh, all time highs, fairly sizable sell off in in, a, in the first couple of days of December, but you know a lot of ground has been recouped. Uh, so we could we could make a retesting, you know, 3,155 there thereabouts, kind of recent record high in, in a zone. And if we go beyond that, we could end towards 3,160, 3,170, and, and so on. 
Uh, if the market does manage to get a drift lower, smoke can be found from this area here in around 3,100, or perhaps in this 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 for this this uh, line here in at 3,066. No, notice how that metric we saw some consolidation in that area at, at the beginning of November, and even we did have a very sharp sell-off early last week. The market didn't actually quite get as low as it, but there thereabouts. And if you go, if you if you do happen to go below that. That would, you know, we still the upper trend, the wider upper trend would still be very much intact. So if we do drop below that metric, we could really head back down toward this zone here in around 30.25. I take a look now at what's going on on the currency markets. Starting off with the euro versus US dollar. Like I said, we've, you know, we're talking about euro dollar now, and we have both the Fed and the ECB update this week. Uh, I see I suspect, given that. The Federal Reserve made it pretty clear that, that, that they won't be moving rates any further. And given that the European Central Bank uh, had just recently began, uh, recently restarted their EC, their, mon their policy, their, mon their uh, loosening policy, uh, I think we could see some potentially for some, you know, further kind of downside moves to the euro dollar because the wider trend has been very much at the downside. Granted, I know we had a big bounce back uh, in October, but if you notice, since then we have seen a couple of lower lows and lower highs. Granted, the highs of early December took off the highs of late November, but we're still in the kind of wider downward trend. And should we press on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the kind of 110 area, an area that is maybe just south of it. We have some pretty decent support from it. Uh, so if we do a size of break below 110, it could take us back down to this zone 109 down to one spot 08.79. Uh, if you do manage to push out higher from here and look kind of bounce back, we could be we could potentially run to resistance at this area here in around one spot eleven seventy nine. I think I'll be on that. We could target this zone here in at one spot twelve forty nine. Uh, take a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. So this this is potentially a big week for the British pound. Uh, given what's going on with the general election, so after a massive sell off between the, uh, for for, uh, for quite some time. In early September, the pound dropped to a 30-year low against the US dollar. But then since then, the market managed to kind of bounce back. This these, this movement we're seeing along here was what was the that we saw in you know October 11th, 10th, 11th. That was when the announcement came that that the Tory party had struck a deal with with the EU. And then obviously the opinion polls since then have been quite strong, strongly in favour of the Conservative Party, the pro business Party, getting getting uh, winning the winning up the up and coming election and looking possibly getting a majority as well. All the MPs who were contesting uh, this this general election for the Conservative Party have all pledged to back Boris Johnson's deal. So the kind of view is that if the Tory Party get a majority, it's likely it's like you know it should look it that should, should be the case of. That should be the kind of final stretch of the UK leaving the European Union on that on the terms of that deal that Boris Johnson struck. So it will be in an orderly manner, and that is likely to kind of add potentially push um, the pound even higher from here. Um, so if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at taking out the early May highs so of in at one spot 30, 31.78, This zone here, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here. Um, in at one spot 3316. If you do have any kind of um, narrow read of polls or, or looks like the, the Labour Party uh, who are not so pro business, um, if, if any kind of signs that, that they're creeping ahead in the opinion polls, we could see some downward pressure on the British pound versus US dollar. So we could look ahead back down for this zone here in around kind of you know one spot uh, 30 uh, 12 down to kind of 129, that potential area. Um, uh, of support should we actually push lower from here and even if you do drop you know below that we could be looking heavy back down toward this blue line here the 50 moving average which comes to play at one spot 28.04 i take a look now at what's going on on the oil market starting off with brent crude So broadly speaking uh since early october we kind of be grinding higher on the uh, on the energy market uh, slowly but surely, kind of edging, uh, uh, eking out higher highs and higher lows, and not only uh, on the like last Friday, we hit a level last seen in late September. But you know, we're, the, the, the kind of incremental moves we're making to the upside aren't exactly huge, but nonetheless, the kind of direction of travel is to the upside. So if you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here in at 65 spot 79. 
And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards 66 bucks per barrel on Brent crude. Uh, any move to the downside could find some support from this yellow line here, the 100 moving average in a 61 spot 46. And if you have a fairly sized break below that, we could head back down towards 60 bucks per barrel. Take a look now at what's going on in WTI. WCI, as you can see, it's a fairly similar, similar looking chart whereby the market since early October has been pushing a lot of assets to the upside. Similar scenario whereby the highs that we saw on Friday is the highest levels we've seen since mid September. So things are moving along to the upside. And we're currently in round 58, spot 52, 55, there, thereabouts. So the next big number to keep an eye out for on, the, uh, on WTI is 6 bucks per barrel, big psychological number, and, uh, and we haven't seen it at that level since mid September. Uh, if the market does manage to drift a bit lower, we might see some fresh buyers enter the fold because, as you can see, uh, buying another dip has been a popular strategy in the last few weeks, weeks and months. So if we manage to drift lower, some more can be found from this red line here, the 50 the 200 moving average, which comes to play at 57 spot 51, and a drop below that even could take us head us back down towards this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which comes to play at 55 spot 80, 86. And even if you go below that, this trend line here, if you draw a low, a low between the lows of early October and mid-October, you get this trend line along here. We haven't even really, even re, really retested it uh, since then, but if you do move, uh, if you do drop, drop even further down, this area, which comes to play there, thereabouts, at 55.26, there, thereabouts, uh, 55 is about 26. In that region, we could find some support from the area as well. Uh, thank you all for tuning in this week, and please tune in next week. Thank you very much.